In this video, I'm going to cover creating a stateful widget with Flutter. So I'm going to get going. I'm going to go to the IntelliJ IDE and find main.dart. In this library, I've already created a stateless widget in the previous episode. In this one, I want to talk about a stateful widget. I won't go over all the features of the stateful widget, but give you an example of a bare bones. A stateless widget is a widget that does not change its state. Now that might be obvious by the, the way it's spelled, but a stateful widget might be a little bit more ambiguous to start with if you're new at Flutter. A stateful widget is a widget that changes its state depending on the variables and attributes defined to that widget. For instance, if I had a color that said the background was black, that may be a state. And then if you clicked on something, the background changed to blue, its state changed from black to blue. So its state is changing. That would be a case for a stateful widget. Now you can command click. The docs are excellent in this library. If you just scroll up, you can see that widget has a mutable state and it has all kinds of literature that describes how you can modify and change and work with the stateful widget. Okay, so let's get to constructing some code. So what I wanna do is use the home page as my template. So I'm gonna copy the top of that class and make my own class called color page. And I wanna change a color to show that the state is changing and what that means to a stateful widget. So a color page wants a method and you can alt enter or if you select on it, there should be a light bulb with an exclamation mark and you can create or press on that and it will show the options to fix this problem. So I'm gonna create one missing override and from the docs, I know that this is a one expression widget in this case that I'm gonna show. So I'm gonna remove the brackets and use the fat, ar fat arrow to, inst to show the construction. And I'm gonna instantiate my state here in the next one, but I haven't created the state yet. I will do that in a minute. So I'm gonna put X as uh, something to show that I'm gonna come back and replace. So for color page, I want to create a class called color page state. And I need to extend a state, so extends state, and its type will be color page, the previous class I just created. And this class also wants to create a method, but before that, let's instantiate color page state. All right, so that fulfills the first class uh, construction. And the second class, I'm gonna hit Alt Enter this time, and it brings up the fix min auto assist fixing menu. I'm gonna create one missing override. And in this case, it, it wants to return a widget of the build method, or the build method is gonna return a widget. So I'm gonna, I only need to construct a little bit of widget to show or construct my page here, which will be a, actually a tree of widgets. So to get going, I need to, I'm gonna use scaffold as the base, the base widget. So I'm going to do this in re or, or backwards. So I'm not going to show uh, nesting and nesting context here. This is going to be more for a tutorial context. So you can construct your widgets however you want to, and and most likely it'll look more like nesting down here. Like here's a return scaffolding, and then its attributes, and so on and so on. But to keep things simple, I'm gonna actually work it backwards and use the methods to waterfall the attributes into each instance. Okay, so scaffolding is gonna be scaffold equals new scaffold. Now, I could probably just make sure, whoops, let me spell this a little bit differently. I made a spelling mistake there. And so, Let's say scaffolding is gonna take a body. You can actually give it a door because it's an individual page or activity in the context of Android. So uh, its body, what do I wanna do for its body? I think I should center something. And in that center, we'll go bar center, and we'll use a center widget. And in that center widget, I wanna give it a child. I'm a, I'll put a row, so 
In the middle of this, I'll put a couple items in that row. So var row equals new row. And I will, it wants some children. So I'm using control space to actually auto assist that attributes and bring that up. And so it children, I'm gonna call this items. So for my items, I'm gonna go var items equals new. And well, let's see, it, it, I'll just give it a list of item one and I'll use a comma a trailing comma to represent I'll need something I could put something more in this list later so for the first item what should I use I think I'll use a raised button so I'll instantiate a raised button and let's say for that raised button I want to say give it give it some text so let's say button text and I, as you can see, I'm just working this backwards to show you that the, the, the instances water fall into each attribute of the next, uh, of the next widget. So let's say for that button text, button text equals new text. And I want to call it click. Oh, well, it looks like the button has an error. If you hover over it, it gives you a tip and it wants on pressed. So I'll click Alt Enter, in this case on the Mac, and add required, required argument. So for this attribute, or for this argument, I'll say I want to call the method on button pressed. And so I don't wanna go down and create it, I'm gonna have Auto Assist help me, and I'm gonna create method. So at the bottom of the class, it adds a method with a uh, doesn't return anything and so let's just check to see if I've wired this up pro appropriately so I'm gonna hit hot reload here we go over here we should say oh there's nothing there yet so let's replace the home up here the home let's say instead of doing home my new page let's it's instantiate color page and then we'll hit hot reload. Oops, I, I hit an exclamation mark. So let's, or colon, not a colon, <laughs> line termination. Anyways, click, you can see that it's clicking. All right, so I've got that constructed. Let's just review real quick. So in my build context, I'm creating a scaffolding. That scaffolding taking the embodying of a center. And that body, it's centered with a row of items. And I'll, that item has one raise button. So the next item, let's add another item. In this case, I want to add a, a container. In this container, I'll, I'll change the color. So let's go bark item two equals new container. In this container, I want to add, oh, no, I want to do, I don't want to add any text. I just want to make it a width of 50 and a height of 50 and let's say let's add a color let's make it a member or class member or field so i'm going to hit color i'm going to create a local field for this class and let's def give it a default value of colors this is predefined colors and let's go blue and we'll say 400 so there's an error what is it so there's an error as you can see my my brain didn't calculate this right so it has an attribute of color and then i want to make it the private variable color so there we go i, I fixed that error and so i'm going to hot reload it should have a container with a small square a 50 by 50 and the initial value will be blue and if you look command click to look at the available values 50 to 900 and I'm selecting 400 and it gives that value so I'll go back to back to this so now I want to click on this and change the background color to red so let's say when I go on pressed of the but the raised raised button it will call this method on button pressed and let's go Let's say if the button color is equal to the original colors of blue 400, we will then change the, the color 
two colors that red and we'll just say 400 as well else if it's red then we'll change it back to blue now let's see what happens if I hot reload it should change a color I actually know what's gonna happen but let's just say oh it doesn't change a color there's some magic you have to call to get it to change or re-render the proper state and that is set state and you can see at set state an anonymous function so let's say set, set state and then we'll call the function we'll terminate it and here I'm gonna do I'm gonna take the ending of this and push it to the end of where I want it so let's just tab in so now we're gonna set set the state we're gonna call the color and then we'll tell the rendering engine to run again by calling set state so let's hot reload and we can go on and click and now we have a changing state the initial state is blue and then we change it to red by the click this is what you call a stateful widget let's review and then finish up so here I call I created a color page that extends stateful widget it takes an expression of instantiation of the color state so it creates the initial state of a blue or uses blue but let's look at the scaffolding of this build context so it returns a widget of build and then it has a centered row which has some items those items take a raised button which I can listen to clicks when I do a click, I change the state by calling set state. So it re-renders the state of the widget. But before I do that, I change the variable, the class member color to a different value. And then the rendering engine is called again. So this concludes how to build a staple widget in Flutter. Thanks for watching, watching me. Follow me for more tips and tricks, and I'll catch you later.